Next up, we've got Alexandre Pantoja taking on Brandon Royval. We've got a flyweight title fight. That means we've got two title fights on this card. Should be an absolute banger of an event. And when I'm looking at this one, this fight is fireworks on paper. This is a rematch of a fight where I did bet on Alexandre Pantoja. He did get the win, as a matter of fact, against Brandon Roy Val. That was three fights ago for him in the UFC. That was back in 2021. And he was able to get the submission in round two. Rear naked choke was able to take the back there. Prolific back taker, elite world-class jiu-jitsu from Pantoja, the cannibal. However, when I'm looking at, um, you know, I'm playing Brandon Roy Val. He's a guy that's impressed me, especially on this recent run of performances. You know, uh, I did bet him back against Kaikar France um, in 2020. It was one of my early bets that I was really proud of because he was a plus 190 underdog. And I just saw a scrappiness, a grittiness, a toughness, a, a, um, a wildness that was going to trouble somebody like Kaikar France, you know, the spinning attacks, the ability to get in your face, push a pace, throw a lot of strikes, and not care about what's coming back. You know, some guys that are hard to fight are guys that don't care about what happens to them. You know, and Brandon Roy Val, for better or for worse, seems like a guy who's pretty content to kill or be killed in his fights. You know, um, he seems like a guy to me that knows that he can go out there and break any man, that he could hurt anybody, that he could catch them in a sub, and that when he is hurt and rocked, he's still dangerous. Uh, because we've seen at times, you know, he got stunned by Kai Kara France. I thought, you know, he dropped down to a knee, but Kai Kara France got excited, tried to come in, follow up, and he said, hold this spinning elbow, bang. And it's an incredible series in that fight. Uh, and you just see that Brandon Roy Val is offense, offense, offense. And, you know, sometimes the key to a good defense is a good offense, right? Keeping that pressure on somebody. And for all the things that Pantoja does well and everything that he did well in that fight, I did think that it was a fight that tested his cardio. I did think it was a fight where he really needed to get Roy Val out of there because Roy Val was fighting at a pace that Pantoja seemed like he could not sustain. Um, and I didn't think that was true for Roy Val. So that's what makes this a fascinating rematch. You have Pantoja with the newly crowned champion mentality. I do think that that could um, build his confidence. You know, a guy who already has worked very hard to get to where he's at, a guy who's built up his career in all the right ways, taken on a lot of tough fights, a lot of difficult challenges. And I think of a guy like, um, you know, Alexandre Pantoja, um, you know, as a similar uh, archetype in some ways to a Mateus Nicolau, except that he's much more durable, right? Um, when you look at a Mateus Nicolau, he's got very good jujitsu and he has pretty good striking. But uh, when you look at Pantoja, he's a guy that's been historically impossible to finish, right? All five of his losses coming by way of decision. I think people, uh, you know, wondered aloud, could he go five rounds against somebody like Brandon Moreno? People thought it's impossible. No way he could go five rounds. He went five rounds in that spot. He was able to do it. So again, more power to him in that. Um, you know, it was a great showing. But Roy Val, you know, he's been beaten. When the fights go to the cards, you know, he's a guy with a pretty salty two and four record. But when the fights end inside the distance, he's coming up aces way more often than not 13 and two in fights that end inside the distance for Raw Dog Rival and Pantosha uh, and Brandon Moreno, two champions, the only guys to ever finish him. And they were both in the UFC. Pantosha got that rear naked choke and Brandon Moreno just slammed him on the ground and hurt his shoulder. Um, but I think that Brandon Rival has gotten a little bit better since that time. Um, you know, very close fight, obviously, against Rogerio Bontarin, but Rogerio Bontarin is a guy that is bricked up, a uh, good grappler, you know, um, solid striking, but his chin just let him down at times in the UFC. And Roy Val, you know, was kind of trying to get back on track there. But then he goes out against Matt Schnell and gets the quick tap in round one, the, the double tap, and then he gets the Mateus Nicolau knockout in the first round. So this is a guy... That has proven to be dangerous for a flyweight. Many, many finishes. Submitted Tim Elliott, who's also shown himself to be a dangerous grappler in this division. So I think there's a lot to like about Brandon Royval as an underdog in this spot. You know, 
uh, a guy who's five and two in the UFC compared to uh, 10 and three for Alexandre Pantoja. So a lot more experience on the Pantoja side here. But I, I do think that Pantoja poured out the jug a little bit in that last fight. You know, he really spent a lot of himself, I thought, to get that win against Moreno. He was tired. He was exhausted. But he just kept pushing and finding a way to win. Could he do that again? Absolutely. Anything's possible. It's fight sports. But when I'm looking at this guy, Brandon Royval, I'm just saying to myself, man, this is a guy you don't want to fight because he's going to keep pushing forward. He's going to keep bringing the ruckus to you. And a lot of these fights that he's lost, he they've been three rounds, right? And now he's going five rounds. And let's see if he's got the cardio to do it. But I think he's going to push a, a pace that Pantoja cannot sustain. So the question will be, can Pantoja get him out of there? I think Pantoja has multiple paths to the finish. He's got knockout power in his hands. He's got the ability to get a submission on anybody. But I think the same thing is true of Brandon Roy Val. You know, would I be stunned if he got a knockout in this spot? No, I wouldn't be totally stunned. He's just showed off his power again in his last fight. He showed off that even when he's hurt, he's a junkyard dog and he could finish you against Kai Kara France. So this is a guy that I think carries power for a flyweight. He's got a big frame. He's awkward. He throws from angles people don't expect and he hits people very hard. He commits hard to his strikes. He throws a lot of weight behind them. And in terms of the submission game, listen, Pantosha is a much more credentialed grappler. I think that when they're both fresh, he is the better grappler. He is more slick. He is more technical. But I think of Brandon Royval as an opportunistic submission threat, a guy that could catch you from anywhere, a guy that can make better grapplers pay if they make one simple mistake. And I also think of him as a guy that can outpace you and make you work harder than you want to. And, you know, the one thing that doesn't matter, um, you know, in grappling when you're super tired is skill. Because if you have all the skill in the world, but you're completely exhausted and you can't access your skill, then it doesn't matter. And we've seen it before with Adolfo Vieira getting submitted. And I just think that Alexandre Pantoja is a, a mortal man. You know, he's a great fighter and a very skilled fighter and a world-class Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. But none of those things make you immune to getting choked. Amanda Nunes, the women's GOAT. She got choked, you know. Uh, Jan Blachowicz wins the title in impressive fashion. He got choked. Glover Teixeira, he's a great grappler. He got choked. Anybody could get choked, baby. Um, it, it's a fight at the end of the day. So um, you can't tough guy a choke. And I do think Brandon Royval is live to get the choke here. I think the same thing is true of Alexandre Pantoja. So I like violence in this spot for sure. And right now I'm leaning towards this underdog, guys. I'm leaning towards the raw dog, Brandon Royval, to get that strep. To get that strap, excuse me, not strep. Excuse me. We we want only good things for Brandon Royval. Uh, so cheers to him. But also cheers to Pantoja because I really like Pantoja. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great representative for the sport, a great champion. But you know something? They'd be one and one if uh, Royval gets the win here. Maybe the flyweight division could use another rivalry and a, uh, a new champion to kick off some ruckus for next year.